All right, welcome everyone. I'm really glad that we have all of us here. There were nine strong in building the power team. So this is one of the SHAPE mini certificates, workshops that is countable for both the management and supervision and the communication and conflict mini certificates. So that means that we believe, and it's a partnership with the real experience through SLICE, we believe that teamwork and what you can learn in this is valuable both within a context of communication and conflict, as well as management and supervision. So we're gonna start rolling. We've introduced ourselves in the chat a little bit, and I am going to pop in the chat um, a link that you all can get to the Mentimeter from. For those of you, I think most are on a computer, and if you're on a phone, that should work just fine as well. Um, you can even, if you want to have the computer and have a cell phone, you can just hit that QR code right there. I'll give it a few seconds. Once you get in there, if you can hit that heart button for me, that'll just let me know about how many folks we've got. Awesome. If you've done some workshops with me before, you know I love Mentimeter. My name is Emily. My pronouns are she and hers. I serve as the assistant director for training and talent development um, in the Lori Student Center and am a proud member of the Division of Student Affairs and love it when we get to work across uh, many and multiple departments within these workshops. So we will go ahead and get started. That link is there again because let's get on with it. The evening is going to go fast. Okay, so show me that you are in Menti. What are the characteristics of a strong team? When you think of a strong team, what comes to mind? What are like a few firsts that you're like, oh, definitely this? Oh, wait. I might play too. All right, is it slow on my end or is really no one contributing yet? <laughs> oh, there we go. Yep, it was slow on my end. Hi, Michelle, I think you just came in. I'm gonna pop the Menti link into the chat. Good communication, collaboration, definitely communication again. Ooh, mutual desires, I like that. Maybe even mutually working in, in the same purpose. That's a little bit different for sure. Accountability, integrity, uh, support and respect and giving grace. Oh, I love that. I've been playing with the word um, accountability or like uh, generosity. I really like that idea of like being generous <laughs> with, with each other, with our colleagues. Someone was like, I don't think anything um, these past years in the pandemic should even count. Now, I don't know if we'd go that far <laughs> and we we might not have all been our best selves these last couple, couple of years. So when we're thinking of a strong, strong team, um, this is what we are looking for, interdependence and cooperation. So when you look at the research of what strong, effective teams have, um, uh, this consistency around interdependence and cooperation, we're going to break both of those down. Interdependence is when team members offer assistance to each other. So I love that. That was kind of that mutual um, desires, support, respect. Um, they seek help when needed, so there might not be a hesitancy to uh, ask for assistance from one another and balance the individual and the group needs. They consider others' interests and feelings. Now, um, this is really considered interdependence rather than codependence or complete inter intradependence. So interdependence is this working together. Cooperation is when team members work across difference toward common goals, right? So they cooperate and seek to value each other's involvement as well as listen to others' points of view. They pull in stakeholders and networkers. Now, cooperation is not a fast process, y'all. It is pretty, it can be pretty slow if it's done really well. So when you think about it, I just did a whole training myself because professional development is a thing for all of us um, on project management. And it was so fascinating to think about how we cooperate uh, between and across different departments, different identities, different backgrounds, different divisions to pull in stakeholders and networkers and communicate across. So really cooperation and interdependence is what we're looking here. Okay, this workshop is full of mini videos, which I love. So check it out and see where you can uh, recognize the couple of characteristics that we've talked about so far.
Give me a thumbs up that you can hear the waves. I love this. So this was an actual ad campaign, I think within Australia for their transportation companies. And it was also about traveling in groups and the safety and, and, um, and uh, appreciation there. Okay, so go back to Mentimeter. Which behaviors did you see demonstrated the most? I think you can uh, pick a couple of them, but if you can only pick one, did you see seeking help, offering assistance, considering other voices, involving others in common goals? Yep. Okay, we're seeing offering assistance, common goals. Yeah, I'm seeing the seeking help too when people would be like, <laughs> that was my attempt at a whistle, right? <laughs> Bringing them over. Awesome. So yeah, involving others, considering other voices, may or may, that was, it was a shorter clip to be able to see that. It happened pretty quickly, but yeah. So we're seeing the highest one around common goals in all of the three examples and offering assistance for sure, as well as seeking help and involving others. Nice job. Okay, um, so this is one from Madagascar um, about the teamwork penguins. So again, remember that interdependence and cooperation. Oh, I like that one. That's a good one. It works on many levels, sir. You guys are a bunch of suckers. That too, sir. Absolutely. Hey, stations. Stage one, go. stop it there. All right. So this, as you can see, is a differently formulated team already, right? They had already addressed their goal. They knew what we're going. You heard phase one, phase two, phase three. So if we're looking at this one, how did the penguins demonstrate effective teamwork? I gave you a couple of them, but type a couple words and how did the penguins demonstrate effective teamwork? Awesome. Okay. So we've got communication came up strong. Of course, everyone was communicating with each other, laid out a plan and made it work by communicating. Each member had a role. I love that. Yes. So it was not the same role. Everyone had an individual, but equally necessary role. Pre-planning, clear tasks around one goal. Each member has a role. Communication um, came up with a plan to solve an issue. Yep. Broke steps down and each member had a role to play. They constantly talked and communicated with each other. Yeah. Shared responsibility, awareness, 
of surroundings and communication, a joint purpose. These are great. Um, so you're obviously already getting the gist and hopefully um, both of those are a little fun. I love um, adulthood watching cartoons. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does. So leaders had different roles between these clips. What, in your opinion, do you feel a leader should focus on when building an effective team? Communication, giving directions, building relationships, flexibility and understanding. All right, we'll wait on just a minute, second more. Awesome, okay. I think we're just about, all right. So we, we have a strong amount with communication um, and then building relationships and also giving directions, clear and concise direction. Um, not a lot around flexibility and understanding and maybe that comes with it. Any, mm, for the sake of time, we will move on. But this is interesting to note for the, for it, right? So the answer is all of these and more. Um, if you were like me, I saw communication. I was like, oh, but if you can communicate, you can do all the rest of these, right? Yep. Um, so there's some consistency. Yeah, wanting to select more than one because all of them are so important and you can't choose just one for leadership. And that's really what this is about. It starts with self-awareness. Absolutely for someone who might be deemed the leader of a group. So maybe that's just the project manager who's shuttling it along, or maybe that's the person who's scheduling or who's facilitating the meetings or who has the content. But all of that starts with self-awareness for all team members who are there. And that's what we're going to do um, during the second half of tonight. So uh, we are going to utilize True Colors. Has anyone done True Colors? Just a little bit. I can see. Yep. I'm seeing some notice, some no shaking heads. This is great. So I appreciate True Colors. For me, it feels very accessible. It's also pretty quick. Um, and I've done it probably, I don't know, eight or eight to 10 times. I tend to come out with the same results, but that's, you know, consistency also. It is a personality assessment for teams and it's a way, it's something that even you can bring into your teams and teamwork. If you're like having a, uh, summer professional development, or you can be like, Hey, I did this workshop. Maybe we should bring this workshop in, whatever that is, right? True Colors um, specifically focuses on personality type around key social information and understands how different types best interact together. Uh, communication, collaboration, coordination, and cooperation are the C's that we are driven by. And there that can be challenging, right? When we get some different characteristics uh, all together in a room and we might feel like we have competing priorities, but it's just about of um, how we prioritize that and how we get all of those needs met and hopefully some wants too, right? So here's what we're going to do. Um, I am going to put a link into the chat. I'm going to walk you through this. So... <laughs> Okay, I see a couple of folks joining in. Um, for a couple of folks on their phone, I admit this might be a little challenging. I think you'll still be able to see it just fine. If you don't have the app, you might not be able to enter in data, um, but you can just follow along with me and I'll send it in a follow-up email so you can do it more fully. You can kind of get a, a gist of it, if you will. Okay, so... This is what the assessment looks like. Um, let's see, Charlene or Asuka, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you see this okay? Great. So you can see at the bottom of the sheet, it's open one, open two, open three, open four. Those are all tabs like this was an Excel spreadsheet, right? Probably most of us have seen an Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna try to define this pretty quickly. So. Rachel has done hers right here, and you can see that there are numbers in these highlighted areas and in these different open ones. Oh, well, there are open highlighted spaces, and I would just change these for whatever makes sense for you. So the instructions are to compare all four boxes in each row 
Do not analyze each word, just get a general sense of each box and then score each of the four boxes in a row from most to least as it describes you. So four is most, three is a lot, two is somewhat, one is least. So if you want to grab, we have um, nine folks here. So you can grab one. Um, and so like, I might put here to Charlene. So you can see, you can put your name here or maybe your favorite color if you don't want to be identified. <laughs> Sorry, Charlene. And <laughs> you can just click it here and then Charlene would go through, okay, active variety sports opportunity spontaneous flexible <laughs> she says no so that might be one that might be appropriate organize plan meet parental traditional responsible hmm, maybe okay warm helpful friends authentic harmonious compassionate yeah okay and then learning science quiet versatile in inventive and competent too oh my gosh look it went the exactly the same that's great okay so charlene will continue to go through you or through this one and then awesome you're already doing that so i'm going to give you about five minutes and i'll check in feel free to shut off your screen and um i will stop sharing i'm going to pause the recording also while we do this okay we'll see you in five minutes all right, so hopefully you had an opportunity to do that if you so chose. Um, Rachel's, as you can see at the bottom, these are her numbers. So her top number, because it has that cool little <laughs> formula up there, it specifically grabs the ones that have to do with orange. So orange is going to be a total of seven for her. Gold is gonna be 14, blue 15, green 14. So she's pretty similar on her secondaries, but her primary is gonna be blue. So um, equate that to what you see on your sheets. And then whoop, we are going to go back to our Mentimeter. All right, so let's see, who do we have with us? We have green, orange, gold, and blue. Let's see. Okay. All right. I know a couple people were on their phone, so they're going to do it tomorrow also. But for those of us who are able to do it, we've got a pretty good spread here. All right. We've got um, two greens, one orange, two golds, and two blues. <laughs> yes. So now we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those. Like you could see or sense um, when I was going through it with Charlene, like there was a, a decent visceral, at least for a couple of them, like, oh no, um, nah, maybe. Oh yes. Right. So when you think about that for other people, that's across the board. And so in these four different quadrants or these kind of typologies, all of them are needed in an effective team. But what can happen is those characteristics can bump up against each other. Um, and so when that happens, what do we do, right? So we have our orange, gold, green, and blue. Orange is gonna be, oh yes, Charlene, would you have a question? Oh, wait, you're, talking but i can't hear you but you're not on mute i'm sorry if you want to type it in the chat i'll address it okay <laughs> okay so orange is going to be our energetic spontaneous charming um, gold will be characterized as punctual organized precise green is more analytical intuitive and visionary and blue is going to be empathetic compassionate and cooperative now you will notice you're like this is not to box us in an only, all right? I want you to hear that. So while I might be a high blue with a secondary orange, that doesn't mean that I am never punctual. My partner might disagree with you, <laughs> but I am sometimes punctual. I also have been characterized as organized um, and sometimes intuitive and visionary, right? So it doesn't mean that we are only one of these. We can have strong leanings towards one or the other, but we really make up all of these characteristics. It's what's going to present pretty strongly in our more natural inclinations. So orange, these are our action-oriented folks. They're comfortable with risk um, and can be competitive, adventurous, and push boundaries. They appreciate spontaneity and flexible scheduling. So um, keeping everything in a tight box in a very specific organized like list, must do this, must do this, might feel a little constrained for our oranges. They also might be so action oriented um, that they don't take time to plan out and do the steps. I just heard a quote recently 
um, around, give me six hours to do a task and I'll, I'll take four of them to plan it. So it's like, there are orange folks. Um, they're going to be comfortably like, well, let's try it this way. And we'll, we'll try it. And if something doesn't work, we'll try it again. Right. Adventurous push boundaries. Our gold folks are going to provide that structure and organization for us. They are going to appreciate and advocate for our order, rules, respect, and dependability. Um, they're the folks we go to when we know um, we just need some things, some specific ways. We need our T's crossed and our I's dotted. We need a once over look at that email, right? Um, they're also characterized around punctuality and appreciate scheduling folks uh, who prefer gold. Now, folks who prefer green are uh, around our innovative and problem solvers. So they they had words like visionary and big picture. Um, they like to analyze and see everything kind of from a thousand foot and think about this and think about this. Um, it can really go outside of the box in their thinking. They're can be a tendency and around some stubbornness and a need to be right. Uh, and so that can play in a, as a factor, um, but that visionary um, typology is really, really necessary for where we can go in teams. And then finally, our blues are going to provide that social and relationship aspect of it, that harmony and bridge building, if you will. There's a can be, maybe not for everyone, but a kindness or compassion, um, at least a willingness to see multiple sides and try to find common ground. Uh, because of this, folks who tend towards blue tend to be collaborative and cooperative and also seek connection in uh, their projects, their workplaces, and uh, their relationships. Okay, so we're going to start seeing some of these in action. Um, I, I feel like Finding Nemo could be considered a classic now. Isn't it more than 20 years old? I feel like, right, it's, it's a classic. Um, and then I'm all like, you know, Snow White's actually a classic, but um, we can probably hide that later. We're hey, going to watch this. Hey, wait up, partner. Hold on. Listen about hey, what wait, you just wait, heard. Wait, I got I to gotta tell you something. Whoa. Nice trench. Hello. Okay, let's go. Oh, bad trench, bad trench. Come on, we're gonna swim over this thing. Whoa, whoa, partner. Little red flag going up. Something's telling me we should swim through it, not over it. Are you even looking at this thing? It's got death written all over it. I'm sorry, but I really, really, really think we should swim through. And I'm really, really done talking about this. Over we go. Come on, trust me on this. Trust you. Yes, trust. It's what friends do. Look, something shiny. Where? Oh, it just swam over the trench. Come on, we'll follow it. Okay. Boy, sure is clear up here. Exactly. And look at that. There's the current. We should be there in no time. Hey, little guy. You wanted to go through the trench. I shall call him Squishy, and he shall be mine. And he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. Come here, little Squishy. <laughs> Ow! Dory, that's a jellyfish! Oh, bad Squishy. Bad Squishy. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Get me. Come here. Let me see that. Don't touch it. Don't touch I'm it. I'm not going to touch it. I just want to look. Hey, how come it didn't sting you? It did. It's ow, just a ow, ow, still. Ow. I live in the anemone, and I'm, I'm, I'm used to these kind of stings. Come here. Ow, ow, ow. It doesn't look bad. You're going to be fine. But now we know, don't we, that we don't want to touch these again. Let's be thankful this time it was just a little one. <gasps> ah! Don't move. This is bad, Dory. Hey, watch this. Boing. Boing, 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 you can't Dory. catch me. Don't boing, bounce on the tops. They will boing. not sting you. Boing. The tops don't sting you. That's Ooh, it. Two in a row. Beat that. Dory, all right, listen to me. I, I have an idea. Uh, uh, a, game. a game. A game. A game? Yes. Ah, I love games. Pick me. All right, here's the game. Oh. Um, Whoever can hop the fastest out of these jellyfish wins. Okay. Rules, okay. rules, rules. Okay. You can't touch the tentacles. Uh, only the top. Something about tentacles. Got it. On your mark, get set. No, 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 wait, wait. Not something about them. It's all about them. Whee! Wait. Dory. Gotta go faster if you want to win. Oh, Dory. Oh. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh. Dory. Whee! So we're cheating death now. That's what we're doing. We're having fun at the same time. I can do this. Just be careful. Yeah. Careful I don't make you cry when I win. Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Give it up, old man. You can't 
fight evolution. I was built for speed. The question is, Dory, are you hungry? <gasps> hungry? Yeah. Because you're about to eat my bubbles. <laughs> okay. So that provided a couple. So we've talked about these four different colors. It always kind of messes me up because the fish are actually colored also. So I'm like, okay. So thinking about the orange, right? Adventurous. I'm just like bringing them down, right? Orange, adventurous, um, gold being like structure, punctual, green, visionary, big picture, um, and blue being around relationships and harmony and connection. What do you think is Dory's primary color? Now, Dory was the blue fish who was like, something about tentacles. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, we've got multiple oranges. It's funny because when you know the, oh, there's a blue, um, mostly orange. So when you know the rest of this story, it is interesting because I feel like there is a lot of blue characteristics in her. And in this, for sure, her orange showed out, right? So there was no pre-planning. There was just like, let's go. I'm so excited. We got to do this. This is great. Um, all of that was like very forward for her. How about Marlin? So I sometimes think it's a little trickier, but maybe I just think kind of like Charlene was mentioning, some of them are pretty close. So orange, gold, green, or blue for Marlin. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so a little more variance. We've got mostly gold, uh, a bit of green, and a blue. Um, put it into the chat, maybe why you think, if, if you're like, I'm going to go hard for something that's not gold. So gold was like getting the plan, getting the structure. He was trying to tell her the things all about it. Um, there was also some like hesitancy. So if we go back, let's see. So gold characteristics, that's going to be structure and organize, rules, respect, dependability, punctuality, and schedules. So yeah, we could definitely see some of that. Also around, um, I think you showed a little bit of green in the need to be right. You know, Dory had it right. You know, she wanted to go through the trench, but he was like, mm -mm, my way's the highway. So you can start to see that some of these are, are all, all together. And then Blue, he really cared about Dory, right? He wasn't going to just leave her behind and he was worried. Um, so he was also showing and demonstrating relationships as well. That's great. Okay, so bringing all of this together, did I skip one? I skipped one. Consider for a moment what we just saw in Finding Nemo. How do their colors and personality types complement one another? So this is really where that rubber meets the road, right? Um, what happens if it was just one of them in those situations? How did they complement each other and ultimately make it out of the jellyfish? They do make it out of the jellyfish. I love it. Ooh, so we're seeing they balance each other. Dory forced Marlin. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Dory pushed Marlin out of his comfort zone with her impulses. Marlin's caution kept uh, helps keep them safe. They were able to come up with a plan, and they put that plan into action instead of over analyzing. Yep. So again, that that need for both. There needs to be good balance in teams, um, balance each other out. As a gold, I do value uh, the quick on their toes idea that Dory had. Sometimes you don't have time to plan. That is very true. Um, one created a plan and structure and the other helped execute it for sure. Um, I keep wanting to see this blue one, but I can't see it. Ha! 
Okay, they balance and lose Dory. Okay, I'm gonna change that structure. Okay, so bringing this all together. So we came here to talk about effective teams. What we've known about teamwork so far is that they're full of all of these different types of people and personalities and, and assessing your team is really important because if it gets too homogenous, right, homogeneous, similar uh, in concept, personality, skill set, it might seem easy at the beginning, but the same missteps are going to happen again and again, or the same things or barriers are going to keep running up against each other, right? So um, I know it can feel sometimes easier to want to work with people who are all just like me. Oh, wouldn't that just be easier? That's what we call affinity bias. And we talk about that in the bias in hiring, recruitment, and retention workshop. And so um, really pushing against this like how do we fit into the team culture and how do we add? It's more about adding to the team culture, that cultural add of it. Um, oh, I love the concept in the chat. Thanks, Charlene. So all of this, the, the teams can be different and you need to do some work on the forefront to understand strengths, challenge areas. Again, what was that number one aspect that all team members need is self-awareness, right? That awareness of where we bring our strengths and what challenges we might have. So I know that I am very clear with people that if we work together, I am absolutely going to get things done by the deadline. It will not be done earlier than the deadline. So if you want to be able to review it, if you want time with it, then we just need to set some different structure. Um, and I'm happy to because relationships are really important to me. So it's it's around having that awareness of self to say, I really like punct punctuality. It communicates respect for me. Um, I know that time means different things in different cultures. And this is just something that's about me, right? So there's a lot of factors that come into the four color types as well, right? We have regionality, we have identity and culture, we have background, we have roles in the institution and at home that kind of force or encourage us into these different uh, characteristics. So all of that, it's not just as simple and, and easy and clean cut as 20 words in a column, right? I want us to, to really create space uh, to know that it's more complex than that. Here are some things that sets effective teams apart. We're looking at clear communication, regular cooperative and collaboration. So that takes check-ins. Maybe they're not long. I know plenty of teams who do like quick 10 minute beginning of the day, like, how's it going? Boom, 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 get it done. And then I know teams who might go off and do independent work because they have very different roles and then come back for a status check once every three weeks. Um, Consensus, not easy to build necessarily, especially when you have a lot of different ways and pieces and processing. That's why the blue is necessary, right? The, the finding commonalities and building bridges. Um, consensus represents also having a good amount of time to be able to make decisions. And I appreciate it in one of the scrolling uh, answers. Sometimes you don't have to have time for consensus. Um, problem solving together, ensuring that multiple viewpoints are heard. Um, and even if there is someone at the helm who is giving direction or encouragement, asking the team, what am I missing? Let me hear from each person. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay with this plan? And getting a verbal consent, um, really creating that space for, for buy-in. Um, it's full of inclusive and supportive relationships. Uh, and sometimes that's ideal, <laughs> might not be happening. So oftentimes it's just cordial um, and respectful professional communication and, and relationships. So um, we talk about that, some of those in the other workshops. So here's some team building tips for leaders. We're gonna go through expectation, context, commitment, and qualification. Oop. I guess I'm gonna talk about each one of those. <laughs> Rachel made this presentation. So expectations when you have expectations at the forefront that everyone has consented to then we can look back to those expectations when we do our check-ins right so what is the project scope that we're working with what are the timelines and is it reasonable considering do we need to make any adjustments with um, what might be being asked of us or uh if we're looking at our schedule and now we got put on three search committees and we just don't have time for anything right what are the expectations and how might they need to shift and how can we communicate that? 
the context of things really does matter. So what is happening around you is just as important as what's happening to you in a team. Um, so the context or maybe the political affiliation that the request might be coming from, maybe depending on the role of your team, this can look really different. I love going in and working with teams and seeing how each of these concepts really impacts um, the team members, uh, considering around that. <sighs> Encouraging commitment through a variety of ways. People aren't just told what to do and they're bought in right? This is around feedback. This is around trust building. And those are two very complicated words <laughs> that are not just a simple definition, right? How to build trust and then repair trust when it's broken, that can be tough sometimes. But people can be committed if they believe in something, if they see how it fits into the larger goal. Um, I I would assert and the research shows that when people think that it's just busy work and it's not attributing to something that's meaningful and more beneficial, the commitment level is low. Um, and then qualification, being qualified to do what you say you are supposed to do, or, you know, there can be the fake it till you make it. And there's lots of reasons um, why there is a variety of things that need to be considered around that. Uh, but qualification in terms of do we have the people at the table who are qualified to do the things that we need to do? Because that will go a lot more smoothly. If you have um, a video editing project and you have no video editors or no one who's like, I think I have iMovie on my on my Apple phone. Yeah. If you want to take a few weeks and learn that before the project happens, maybe that will be a reality. But what are the qualifications and needs of the team before you get started even? Um, accessibility. So ensuring it, that needs or accommodations for your team members, again, at the beginning are met. So maybe there are childcare needs and a 745 early morning touch base is not going to work for everyone, but someone might not feel um, maybe a dad, mom, caretaker isn't going to feel like they have the space to request that being able to check in and say what are the needs that that we have and creating space um, while we're building can can create some of that so what are the accessibility needs that can be around materials uh it can be around actual like are we doing this hybrid virtual in person um and how do we agree to all of that um what are the benefits to all getting around a whiteboard at the same time and maybe that's not every time but maybe it's once and then at the middle and then at the end and then what does our communication expectations look like right what is acceptable what is too much what are on hours off hours and then i mentioned feedback right so all of these eight concepts um expectations context commitment qualification accessibility ownership oop, communication um, and feedback are all really really important that is a <laughs> That's a lot of content. So we wanted to leave you with a few of um, the tips that we can go through. Um, oh, I skipped over ownership. I'm kind of out of it tonight, y'all. Um, the concept of ownership is really similar to the commitment piece of it, that if we all feel like we own a part of it, um, then there can be higher buy-in in, in it as well. Um, and how do all of those pieces that different people own come together? And how do we balance the need of the whole group to move a project forward if we feel a lot of ownership own, over our small little portions of it, right? So how do we work through some of that? And this is tricky business, right? These eight concepts that we just laid through, like those are not easy. So where have we been tonight? We have um, started talking about interdependence and cooperation, right? Working towards a common goal, asking for help, getting that assistance, um, all having a different role, communicating. Then we talked about true colors. We talked about um, oranges and golds and greens and blues. Uh, I will send out afterwards um, to all of us that are here the schedule or the um, links for the pieces that we've gone over tonight so you can review them and my hope is that you will continue to consider these tips for leaders right what agency do you have um, to maybe even ask for uh, true colors to be done in your team or the next time a project comes up or maybe you're just 
in the accounting department, you're in the ordering department, you are scheduling things, you're doing all of those. How can you consider um, these eight characteristics and what might you need to ask for, right? What might you be able to manage up from your leaders in terms of, I'd love some uh, clear expectations around what you'd like from this for me. How do we do that together? Um, how do I get more context? So it'd be helpful to understand a little bit more around what's going on as much as you can share because then I can do my work better. Um, some of these things you're like, yeah, Emily, easily said than done. I do believe that that once we practice it, it gets a little bit easier because we want a high commitment. We, we want to push against burnout and I know burnout is really high, right? Um, and so what can we do to really create teams um, that we want to be a part of, right? I want to thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Um, we have the QR code that is in the attendance link, and I always forget to do that. I'm going to stop the recording. So everyone who's been recording, you've been awesome. Um, send me those learning points, and you're great. And have a good night.